Morning guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm doing my League 2 predictions for the upcoming 2023-24 season. I feel like the quality of this league has gone up a notch this season. You know, some of the teams who you know the teams that got promoted, Wrexham and Notts County, you know, have got a lot of money behind them, a lot of quality. And you know, even the teams that have stayed in the league have added a lot of quality. I feel like I'd say League 2 is as strong as League 1 this season in terms of quality. So yeah, it's really one, really tough one to predict, and yeah, everyone will have a different one to twenty-four. So it'd be good to hear your predictions in the comments, and yeah, let's get into the predictions. So we're going from twenty-fourth up to first. So um, starting in twenty-fourth, I'm going to put Crawley Town. I think everyone's got this around the same place, and it's no surprise really. Crawley are in a bit of a mess off the pitch, really. You know, the structure of the club. You know, selling a lot of the better players. You know, Ashley Nadison who scored a few goals from last season, gone to a League 2 rival, Gillingham, obviously Aaron Mordo, Taste John Mord, so is Warsaw, um, Jack Poland in the midfield too, he's gone to crew, so they're losing a lot of the better players, and the mood around the club at the moment seems a little bit toxic with the fans and the owners, um, and yeah, how that club's run at the moment is shocking really, and hope Crawley, um, for the fans, get that sorted out, because they deserve a lot better, but I can't see them, them staying up this season, I think they're going to really struggle, and I think they're going to go into the um, get relegated to the National League. In 23rd, I've got Newport County, and I think the South Wales side are going to struggle next season. I think they've lost a few key players, like Priestley Farkerson and um, Mickey Dimitriou. Uh, I think they're two key defenders from last season, and they've lost them. They haven't really replaced them too. I think Jameson's coming from Tramia. I think that's an average signing. Um, doesn't really um, match the quality that, that they used to have. And you know, at the moment, the pre-season results tell it. At the moment, I know you shouldn't read into pre-season too much, but there's got to be a little bit of momentum. And they haven't really got on good in pre-season. They've picked up a few poor results, and I think that's going to lead into this season. I think they're going to have a negative season. I think it could end up in relegation for the Exiles. In 22nd and just avoiding relegation, I've got recently relegated from League One, Morecambe. Um, I think you know they've they lost a lot of players. Um, they've also they've had to build a new squad. Really, they've lost some key players, the likes of Connor Ripley, and um, Carl Stockton up front. I think that's a massive loss um, for them. You know, to replace his goals that he scored um, for Morecambe will be a big loss. And also, I just think the players have brought in have been very bang average. The likes of Jan Songo. Um, he's brought Derek Adams. You know, he likes to bring in players that he knows and relies on. I think. Um, he probably needed a fresh start, you know, it didn't work at Morecambe last season, um, obviously they got relegated, and I just think there's a lot of better sides in this league, um, so they've had to put them down into 22nd. In 21st, I've got another recently relegated side, I've got Accrington Stanley, uh, I think they're going to be down there, um, definitely in the bottom half this season, but with a good manager like John Coleman, they'll definitely be safe this season, you know, he's a great manager, he's done brilliant work at Accrington Stanley, but with the other squads this season adding quality they, I feel like they've been left a little bit behind this season they've lost some key players the likes of Harvey Rogers and uh, Michael Nottingham moving on from Ackerton Stanley and haven't really added much quality they're relying on a lot of loans um, they've got quite a low budget doesn't mean nothing in this league to be fair you know that we've seen a few sides go up the likes of Stevenage haven't got the biggest budget but and they haven't really added quality on paper, but it could work out for them. But at the moment, I've got them in 21st. In 20th, I've got Sutton United. I think this season um, they might drop off a little bit. They've had two good seasons in League Two. Um, obviously, last season they just finished below mid table, which was a good finish for them. I think overall, in the transfer window, they've had a decent transfer window. They've lost some key players, the likes of um, Alistair Smith, Will, Will Randall, Armo, Armo Bogle. Um, but they've added some decent players, the likes of Harry Smith up front. Um, they've also brought in Omari Patrick from um, Carlisle. So they've brought some decent players, but I just feel like they might get a little bit um, caught out this season. I think a lot of teams might discover um, how to play, and I think they're going to finish in the 20th at the moment. In 19th place, I've got Harrogate Town. Um, I think Harrogate, Simon Weaver, you know, he's the longest serving manager in this league. Another manager that's done a superb job, but yeah, 19th. I think Harrogate would probably be happy with that if, I, if um, the fans would take probably take that now. I think that Harrogate as a club would be happy with that too. 
and they've been having me in the stayed up really I think that's their ultimate goal this season and um, they haven't got the big, big, biggest budget in the league but you know to stay up I think they'd take that they've got some good players I like Luke Armstrong up front I think he's a handful and he's quite an underrated striker in this league James Daly on the wing I think that's a really good addition Odo from um, Rochdale another good addition McDonald at the back so they've made some solid additions but yeah 19th I can't see him at the moment finishing any higher than that in 18th place I've got Crew Alexandra um, I think it's going to be a below par season uh, for the railway men um, I think you know they've brought in some alright signings I think Mickey Demetrio um, at the back that adds um, experience um, but they've also lost Dan Adji which is a massive uh, departure for him he's moved up a league joining and um, recently promoted um, Leighton Orient into League One that's taking I think he scored 16 goals um, for crew last season so taking a lot of goals out of the side but with Baker Richardson coming back and Chris Long I think that could be more than enough to be safe and they could um, don't get me wrong like this this prediction could be a lot higher there's still plenty of time left in the window and um, just sign some more players so yeah at the moment I've got crew in 18th 17th place I've got AFC Wimbledon um, I think they've been probably the bi busiest um, in terms of activity in the transfer window so far. Um, they've made some decent signings. I think Ben Reeves in the midfield, solid addition for the midfield. Alex Bass in between his sticks, uh, good lead to um, goalkeeper on loan from Sunderland. Um, and they've also got some um, current good players, the likes of Ali Al, um, Hamadi, um, Jack Curry at left back. Um, but the problem I think for Wimbledon, I think the manager... Um, Johnny Jackson, I don't think he's good enough to take Wimbledon um, to close to the you know the playoff hunt. You know they ended the season quite poorly, um, you know finishing below Walsall in the end. I think they ended up finishing 21st, 22nd in the league. So yeah, I think Wimbledon they'll improve a little bit on last season, but yeah, probably not good enough for the club in terms of their aims. And I'm I'm, get, I'm predicting them to finish 17th. In 16th place, I've got recently relegated Forest Green Rovers. Um, I just can't see him challenging for that top half at the moment. I think you know they've brought in a new manager, David Horseman. Um, I don't know too much about him, so I comment, can't comment on that appointment. But I just don't think the club seems the same since you know Rob Edwards departed departed them to join Watford at the time. Yeah, it's don't don't seem the same. I think they've made some couple of good signings, the likes of um, Matty Taylor up front. I think that's a real solid striking option for him. They've also uh, brought in Ryan in. He's at the back, you know, big centre back um, for a, a League Two level. So, yeah, 16th. I can't see him finishing any higher than that at the moment. On the 15th place, I've got Swindon Town. Um, I think Michael Flynn's men have only signed three signings this, se um, this summer so far. Obviously, Liam Kinsella, um, Dan Kemp, and Mahoney joining the Robins. And at the moment, I think they're going to, you know, not going to be pushing for that um, playoff front at the moment. I think they've got some good attacking options. Obviously, got the experience of Charlie Austin up front. Um, obviously, I think Dan Kemp is a real good signing on loan. I don't know what MK Duns are doing there, but um, at the moment, I think they need a few more defensive um, signings. I think their defence is looking very weak. And the way Mark Flynn wants to play, he likes to play defensively. He likes his side to be solid defensively first before they go and attack. I think that's not going to work at the moment. But, you know, Mark Flynn, he's a solid League Two manager. And eventually I think he'll get Swindon playing but at the moment I've got um, Swindon 10 to finish 15th in 14th place I've got Tramia Rovers um, you know they've made some good signings as well, uh, as well in this summer transfer window so far Christian Dennis from Carlisle he's probably their headline signing you know he's bagged a lot of goals for the, um, for the Cumbrians last season as they got promoted and he'll, he'll add them goals to Um, You know, they've also got some decent little players attacking lead. They've also got Josh Hawks, Kevin Morris. Um, but I think the fullbacks, losing both fullbacks, Ethan Bristow and Josh Cogley, I think they're two uh, big losses for Tramia. And, you know, there's question marks over the manager as well. I know Walsall have gone for a similar approach, but Ian Dawes, um, I think it's a questionable um, appointment. But one that could pay off um, if the, if he's given time. But I'll try me are willing to give him give him the time. Um, they'll be looking to push for per, for promotion playoffs this season for sure for that. And 14th, I don't think Tramia fans will be happy with that. 
but at the moment I just don't think they've got enough to break into that top half so yeah and at the moment I've got Tramier to finish 14th in 13th place I've got Colchester United um, yeah I think Ben Garner would do a good job at Colchester obviously he got appointed towards the end of last season he did keep him up um, and yeah I think I think he'll do a good job and push him on this season um, obviously Colchester fans will be expecting for a better season they've had some really um, below par um, seasons over some recent seasons so they'll be expecting um, hopefully to push up the league this season I think they will do it under Ben Garner got some exciting players like Noah Chilvers um, and Junior Champadu I've heard he might be leaving now um, to the championship so if they do lose him that'll be a bit of a big loss but um, Nico Lawrence um, that's a good um, sign in at right back um, it looks exciting and yeah they've got some good players good experience in there they've got a bit of a balance Connor Hall at the back good centre back and that was a good signing in January Matt J if you get him scoring like he did at Exeter that is a um, good player there so yeah Colchester in 13th in 12th I've got Barrow and I think this would be um, a good finish for Barrow um, obviously they'd probably like to push on from last season's um, ninth place finish in League 2 and they're probably capable of it um, who knows you know League 2 is a very unpredictable league and you know these predictions are very hard to make so yeah I probably won't get anywhere near any of these but it's what I think at the moment but you know, Barrow brought some good players in I like David Worrell Jamie Proctor um, two experienced players so they're really good additions you know they've kept so far you know, hold on to you know Ben Whitfield. They did lose Josh Gordon up from which is a big loss um, for Barrow. But Jeremy Proctor is not a bad replacement for him. Um, but yeah, mid table for Barrow, I think that's not a bad finish. And yeah, twelfth place. Moving on into the top half now. In eleventh place, I do have Doncaster Rovers. Um, I think they'll have a decent season, a lot better than the one they did have last season. You know, it was a pretty poor season um, for Doncaster. They've got a much better manager this season, a much steady and very competitive manager in Grant McCann. And it, I think it's that shows that they're, they're going to be competing a bit more this season with a manager like that. You know, he did brilliant things with them um, in League One, so I think he should be able to replicate it in League Two. Um, you know, I think 11th place will be um, a solid finish for them this season. Um, yeah, back competing in that playoff front. I think Joe Ironside up front, that's a brilliant addition. Uh, but overall, yeah, Doncaster, they've still got some um, doing, I think, in the transfer window. I need to sign a couple more signings, but yeah, 11th place, I've got Doncaster Rovers. Into 10th place, I do have more side Warsaw. Um, I think we're going to have a good season. Um, again, similar to Doncaster, much better one than we did have last season. Uh, I think we're going to be breaking into that top half, hopefully. I think the signings we've made have been positive. Obviously, the big one, Danny Johnson coming back. Um, this season on a permanent was a massive for us he's going to be our vocal point hopefully going to um, be our striker that scores 20 goals and push us up to that league we made some other solid additions though Chris Hulsey, Priestley Ferguson, Ryan Sturk Freddy Draper looks like a quality player and yeah I've been impressed with that business um, so far this summer uh, I think we only need one or two more from completing the squad which is always good we won't be rushing around in the last week or so of the, of the transfer window and I think Matt Sadler, um, even though I was underwhelmed um, when he was appointed, I think it's going to be um, a good appointment for Warsaw. It's going to be a different appointment, different ones we've had from previous seasons, which I think will work in Warsaw's favour. He knows the club inside out. Um, he knows the players that were here last season. And hopefully, from the start we've been playing in pre-season, he can replicate it into the competitive season. And we have a decent season, hopefully pushing for them playoffs. But um, I would take tenth place. You know, lay down the foundations going in into the long term. Really, in ninth place, this might come with a surprise, but I do have Bradford City. Um, you know, Bradford, a massive club for this league, and you know, ones that are always going to be favourite for promotion. But I have got them missing out on the playoffs. Um, obviously, they've got Andy Cook up front, who was the top goal scorer in the league last season. And no doubt about it, he'll be firing in 20 goals this season. But I just don't have that feel with Bradford this season. I think they might narrowly miss out. Um, like I said earlier in the video, there has been some real quality sides added into this league. And they've brought in real quality players. And ultimately, they've brought more um, money into this league. And 
Uh, some of the songs they've made have been good. I like Alec, Alex Patterson from Harrogate in the midfield. That's a real good signing. But some of the players they've brought in and um, been quite average um, for Bradford standard, in my opinion. Um, I still think they're four or five signings off. Um, real competing and changing my mind of them maybe pushing for the playoffs um, and maybe sneaking in there. But at the moment, like I said, might come with a bit of a surprise. But I do have Bradford to miss out of the playoffs in ninth. In eighth place and just missing out on the playoffs, I do have MK Dons. Obviously they got relegated last season on the last day um, and they'll be looking to bounce back with, at the first time of asking but I think they're going to narrowly just miss out. Um, I think they've got quality in that squad. They've lost a few players, um, quality players, but they have added a few good players the likes of Cameron Norman who's a good um, right back in this league. Craig McGivery which I thought was a great signing for them. They've also appointed Graham Alexander as their new manager. Um, yeah, he's a good manager for this league. He'll get him playing some good football, and you know, no doubt about that. That they'll be challenging for that playoffs. Even they might be even be challenging for promotion, and they'll definitely be in that pack. But at the moment, and I'm going to predict them just to miss out in eighth. Moving on to the top seven, then this is where it gets interesting. Um, in seventh place, I do have Grimsby Town, and I've, I think they're going to be a dark horse going into this season. Now, they had a really, real good positive season last season. They did really well in the FA Cup, um, reaching the, the latter stages of that competition. Um, they did well in the league too. They got into the top half. So, yeah, I think they'll build on that from last season. I think they're going to sneak into the playoffs. They made some real good signings. I like Charles Vernon, like I mentioned uh, earlier. Harvey Rogers, I think that's a great signing at the back. Um, and you have some real good signings to add to the current good play players they've got the likes of Harry Clifton um, Otis Khan and they've got some real good players and I think they're going to be a solid unit and I think Paul Hurst will get them playing and getting results and they can see him um, sneaking into them playoffs so Grimsby Town in 7th in 6th place and I think Salford will be in the playoffs again this season in 6th place um, I think they're going to have another solid season I think Neil Wood the ex first experience of being a manager in the EFL. I think he'll build on this and I think they will be in the playoffs. I think their signings have made have been positive um, and I think they've brought in some real, real good um, signings for League 2. Obviously bringing back two players, Alex Cairns and Mariapa. And, you know, they brought in Luke Garbutt um, to replace Ibor Toure, who was a bit of a loss, but I think Luke Garbutt is a great signing for League 2. Um, Curtis Tilt as well at the back. Um, and Os Osama um, Ashley in the midfield too are some good signings and I think you know, like I said to add to the good players I've already got the likes of Callum Hendry Elliot Watt um, Salford are going to have a real competitive squad going into this campaign and yet yeah, I think they're going to finish 6th in 5th place I do have Gillingham if we talk about our season last season it was a season of two halves really first half of the season they're looking bound to get relegated struggling to pick up points and then Brad Gallinson came in, he took over the club and he's real pumped in and injected some real good money there and they're having a real good go now. Signings this summer um, consist of the likes of Johnny Williams, Ashley Naderson, Scott Malone, um, just to name a few and they've got a real good competitive squad now. Obviously Neil Harris um, being manager, he's a real good manager um, for Gillingham, he's really, um, he did a good job at Millwall and you know one of the better managers in this league. You know, getting get playing, obviously, he's been backed now, so he's got to deliver, really, so the pressure's on. But I do see him getting into them playoff spots with the squad they got. So, yeah, I've got Gillingham in fifth. In fourth place, and just missing out on automatic promotion, I do have Wrexham. Um, I think a lot of um, outsiders looking in League 2 will obviously see Wrexham as the clear favourite to win the league. And obviously, the most talked about club in this league, but... I do have them in the playoffs, but just missing out on automatic promotion. My reasons why I think they'll get off to a slow start, a little bit like Stockport last season. Um, you know, I know it's pretty much the same squad, but I think it'll take some time to adjust to the level, really. And um, they've got some quality players, on, and I can't deny that. You know, Ben Foster in goal, ex Premier League um, goalkeeper, Paul Mullin up front, but I have heard he's injured, so that'll be a big loss for him. Um, you know, Oli Palmer, um, and yeah, they've got some good players there at Wrexham, um, and yeah, but they'll they'll definitely be competing this season. Got a good manager too, Phil Parkinson, 
But like I said, I think they'll get off to a little bit of a slow start and I don't think it'll be as easy as people are making it out to be. I think they'll have some tough games. But yeah, just in fourth, I've got Wrexham. Into the automatic promotion spots now. And in third, I do have Mansfield Town. I do think this is the season Mansfield do get promoted. I like the, the signs that they've kept the majority of the squad. I think they'll do, obviously, squad morale and the changing room there. Um, the world are good. You know, and then they had some good quality, Bailey Cargill, um, a lot of that signing, Will Swan returning to the club on a permanent deal, that one was done quite early too, so yeah, that's a real good signing, he can score between 15 to 20 goals this season, I believe, uh, Aaron Lewis at left back, um, good signing, and yeah, they've just added some real good quality to add to the other quality players in the core of the squad, the likes of Reese Holt, you know, Quinn in the midfield, so yeah, they've added some good quality. You know, Nigel Clough as manager, his aim this season has to be to get him out of this league because, uh, you know, Nigel Clough is a great manager for this league, but at the moment, he hasn't really delivered that promotion for him, uh, missing out, you know, the last two seasons, you know, one in the playoff final and last season's heartbreak of, you know, missing out on the playoffs. So, yeah, I've got him go going up automatically this season in third. In second place, I do have recently promoted Knox County. Um, I've gone down to do back to back promotions and I think they're capable of doing it. I think they've got a real good strong squad. You know, the ones they had last season like cause the likes of Macaulay, Langstaff, John Bostock, and they've added some real good quality players, the likes of David McGoldrick. Um to think he scored twenty two goals in League One last season, um he's gonna easily score twenty five um I think this season. It's a real good sign in that one. Um, Will Randall from Sutton United, yeah, I think he one of their better players, Sutton. Um, Danny Danny Crowley in the midfield from Morecambe. Um, Jody Jones has returned to the club. And there's some real positive signs for not not scared to go up. They've got um, a real good manager, Luke Williams. A um, lot of the way they play. Um, expansive football. So, yeah, I think they're going to be real strong side this season, not County. And, um, yeah, I've got them in, in the automatic spot in second place. So, the team I think will win League 2 this season is Stockport County and um, obviously last season they missed out on promotion in the playoff final to Carlisle United and I think they'll use this you know heartbreak that that feeling to you know step it over the line this season and win the league they've kept the majority of the squad the main the main core the likes of Fraser Horsfall, Will Collar, Paddy Madden, Carl Wooten the likes of them experienced quality players and they've added, you know, Nick Powell from um, Stoke. I think that's a real um, great boy for Stockport County. Louis Barry comes in on loan, exciting winger who offers them, um, you know, something different. You know, he can play on the wing up front. Um, yeah, made some good signings Stockport. Not many, but their their signings with lots of quality. Obviously, Ibor Toure from Salford as well. That's a real good addition. I think he'll slot into the back three um, really well there. And yeah, the, the, I think um, I think a lot of people have put them to win the league, but I generally believe um, even last season I thought they were going to get promoted. I think they were, were the best side I saw um, last season. I saw them three times, and um, they were brilliant in every game I saw them. Um, I think Stockport, you know, with a great manager like Dave Challoner, will be up there. And in my opinion, I do think they'll win the league with the quality of the squad. And like I said, from last season's heartbreak in the playoffs, I think they'll use this and win the league. So there you have it. They are my predictions for the upcoming League 2 season. Um, I think it's going to be a real good um, season. I think it's going to be an exciting one. There's some real good um, teams in there. I think it's going to be competitive like every League 2 season is. But I think this one has an extra notch in quality um, from the previous ones. You know, Look at the signings I've mentioned. Um, I think this is going to be a good season, nice competitive one and hopefully, obviously being me boys, Warsaw are up there come the end of the season. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this um, video, leave in the comments your predictions for the season, I'd like to hear what you are thinking for the upcoming League 2 season and yeah, thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.